what's going on, everyone? Okay, so uh, we got a little bit lazy with our Git. Um, so I think it was like two or three episodes, maybe more, that where we didn't actually save to our Git. So Git status, we actually didn't change that much. But, I mean, we added a lot of code. It would have been nicer if I would have been uh, adding it as we as we went. Um, so that's better practice, even though our code changes were small. Uh, but since we didn't do that, we'll just commit right now. That way, that way we at least have it. Uh, we did a lot here, so added um, ability to clear, do operations, and what else? I forget. I forget what else we did. And uh, change color of buttons. Okay. So we'll push that. Like I said, we should, probably should have been doing it a little bit more. Uh, okay, so there's still some things that I want to clean up. Our positive negative button doesn't work. Our changing the sign doesn't work. Um, if we do something like 9 divided by 3 and it ends in a decimal place, this is fine, I guess, but I would rather just say 3. Um, that's just that's a really easy fix we can do. What else? Uh, I would like it to do like 2 plus 5 plus six and like keep keep doing the tracking keep doing the adding and stuff as we're going uh if we do a decimal well, we haven't even set up our decimal place yet so um there are all there's a whole bunch of options that we have let's do this that uh the decimal place at the end first that's pretty easy nine divided by three uh, should be just three okay so there's a lot of different ways that we could do this. And there's like mathematical ways that we can do this, where we can take this decimal number that we have and then uh, truncate it, like subtract and truncate to get the just the decimal portion and then try to see if it matches up with that same value. But again, mathematically, we could do it that way. But for us, we know exactly what we want. We already have this value as a string. If it ends with uh, dot zero, let's just remove that dot zero. Okay, so, and we're gonna do that in the process operation function. So right before we actually save it uh, to the display label text, I'm gonna say if display string, uh, there should be a function called ends in, what do we have? Uh, let's see what we have here, because we should have like a starts with starts ends. We unfortunately it looks like we don't have an ends. Let's see. We can get the end index. Ha oh, there we go. Okay, that's that's what I was looking for. So it has prefix, has suffix. Okay. So I want to know if it has the suffix of dot zero. Then I'm just going to remove. So display string dot. Let's see here. Remove all, remove last. Well, we know that it should be the last two characters. Remove the specified number of elements from the end of the collection. Okay, so remove last two, right? So that should do exactly what we want. First we check, so after we do our math, we check does it have the suffix that we're looking for? If it does, just remove those last two and then uh, do that. Uh, then check the label. Okay. 
So let's try that. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay. But still, if we do something like 9 divided by 2, we'll still get uh, like a, a decimal place. 8 divided by 3 equals, we'll get something long. Still, we want to deal with that. Um, we'll deal with that, like I said, a little bit later. Let's do the sine next, because sine should also be pretty easy. Okay, so in this case, we do need both screens again. Let me, because we need to, uh, we need to access this button so we can make an outlet. And we don't want this to be main storyboard. We want to look at the view controller. Okay. So same like before, the sign, the sign is kind of a unique button. So we want to make it, I want to make it have its own action. We don't necessarily need to. There could be different ways of doing it, but I would rather just have it be its own separate action. It's going to make it really easy. So on sign clicked. So if uh, display string yeah, dot has, we'll just use that, has prefix. So if it starts with a negative, then that means we have to remove that first one. Right? So display string dot, what do we got? Remove, we have a remove first. Cool. Okay. So if it starts with that sign, then we have to remove that one because we're, we're changing it to positive. Else, we need to add that. Okay, so we're going to do display string dot insert. And you can see we're inserting the new character at a specific location. Uh, so we're going to, the character or the string that we're inserting is obviously negative and then you'll notice the type here uh, in other programming languages like if we're inserting we might be able to do something like zero so we might be doing just like an index into this string swift swift strings are a little bit different you can see that it is complaining because it doesn't understand it can't just say zero is like a string index so uh, they have Swift strings have their own special class of uh, a, a class object that allows you to reference positions within the string. So in this case, it's still pretty easy, right? So we want to do our display string dot. We can actually get access to the start or end index. And it just so happens that the start index is where we want to insert that. So, okay, so now we've updated our display string. Now, Display label dot text equals display oh, display string. Cool. Let's test that out. That should work. No problem. There's still one small issue. I just didn't want to hit it. I didn't want to deal with it yet. I wanted you to see it uh, in action. But we do have this. So let's do like negative two. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So negative two plus two equals zero. That's exactly what we would expect. Uh, negative eight. That's kind of the issue that, that we have. That's what I was going to deal with. If it's zero, we don't really have a negative zero. So we want to be able to say eight negative, let's say minus two should be negative 10. So that's perfect. Okay. But the thing that I want to get rid of is that negative zero. Uh, again, that's small, but I, I just, I don't like it there divided by three, right? Same, same thing. I didn't like that there. So I would rather have, let's say 18 divided by three is six. Yeah, yeah. So same thing. I didn't like that dot zero here. I don't like negative zero there. So that's also another easy fix. So on sign clicked, uh, if display string equals the string zero, we're just going to return. Okay. Mm, yep. 
That should be good. Let's see what this looks like here. So now I have zero, exactly like I would expect. Negative eight minus eight. Oh, of course, that's negative 16. Uh, let's say uh, eight minus eight. Again, it shouldn't be negative zero or whatever. There shouldn't be any reason why it would be negative zero. Uh, we still don't have that decimal place going. Actually, there's there's a really simple way to do that decimal place as well. Uh, if you think about it, all we're really doing, even in the on number clicked, this is almost what we want. So uh, if so, as we start typing a number, if we hit the decimal place, we really just want to append. So that's almost what we want. So let's see what happens if we just add this decimal place to the on number clicked. Okay. This is going to be mostly correct for us, not 100%. So if I do like 2.5 plus 3.5 equals 6. Okay. Yep, that's right. 2.4 plus 3.2 equals 5.6. There we go. Right. Uh, floating point numbers or double numbers in programming can be a little bit weird. So sometimes we'll get just some weird values. I'm trying to think 2.13 plus uh, point. That's the bug that I want to fix right now. Uh, Maybe I'd like to have a zero in front of there. Again, it's small, but I think I would like that. Uh, I didn't. I don't remember my numbers, so I don't know if that's correct or not. Um, but yeah, like it seems like it's working pretty well. Plus three point six seven seven equals one. Okay, yeah. So it seems like it's working pretty well. I would just like to have that leading zero there. Is that better? I think it's better. That's just, again, it's small, but I think it's better. Plus five equals 8.2. Um, okay, so how are we gonna do that? On number click. So we already have this, we have a couple of return, like guard situations. If text is zero and display string is zero, Okay, so that's pretty close to what we what we already have. So if the display string is zero, how can we do this? We're going to change it around a bit. Uh, maybe we'll want to clean it up some. Let me think. Because what we really want to do is we want to append which is working we just don't want to reset okay well i guess we could say okay that's fine if should reset and a text is not equal to the dot okay then, so if if the text is not the dot, then, or if the text is the dot, then we'll still just append, right? So the only time I'm resetting is if we are supposed to reset and text is not equal to dot. So let's test that out. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's see. So of course we have zero there. Okay, nope, that didn't work out quite well, did it? Oh, because we still think we're supposed to. Okay, I see. We still think we're supposed to reset because we didn't say should reset equals false. So, okay, I didn't actually like that anyway. If, if text is the dot, how can I do that? Uh, 
Okay, well, I'll just put it inside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nest this a little bit. No, I don't want to do that either. I guess it just needs to be outside. We might, we might end up cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, I guess the original thing I was going to do was kind of change this around. Because really, we have this special case where if the text string is zero, we actually have to do a couple of different things. Right? We have, it's just, it is the special case. Obviously, oh, let's get rid of this. Obviously, if text string is zero, if uh, text string equals zero, so okay, if display string equals zero, and if text equals zero, then we just want to return. Right, we're not doing anything else if uh, text equals the dot. Well, there's a couple of things we want to do, and we should reset is false because now now we're done or now we have a number. We want to append. So we, we kind of have to, we can't just return because I don't want it to do this normal. Like I don't, I don't want it to reset. Okay. So this could probably be cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to think about it and see how we can clean it up. But yeah, so if the display string is zero, then we come into this and basically we're, we're returning no matter what. Uh, if the text string if the text we're trying to add is zero, don't add it, just return. But if the text string is the, the decimal place, we gotta, just in case, we gotta make sure we're not resetting. We wanna append that dot, and then we wanna change the display label, but we also wanna skip everything else here. So then we'll just return. So I think that looks good. Like I said, we're gonna clean that up eventually, um, but let's just check. Okay, so. 0 0.2 plus 3.45 equals, okay, that looks good, 0.23 minus 6. Okay, I think that, that looks good to me, 0 0.21. Yeah, I think that's good. Got that negative there, plus, I don't know what math I did, but that does seem like it's working, so, okay. We ran into a little bump there, but it does look like it's working really quick. We're going to uh, add to our GitHub. Make sure that we save that code. Uh, added decimal numbers and fixed leading zero bug. All right. Okay, so there's still a couple more things we need to fix, like when we have a whole bunch of numbers here. I don't like that. Um, we still don't have this working, so we're going to figure out how that is working or how we can get that to work. If we tried it on like iPad, it wouldn't work there either. What, what else? Otherwise, oh, and then like I said, I would like to do like three plus five plus six plus nine and have it keep doing the keep doing the operations as we're going if there's already a number that's saved in the saved value so i guess yeah we'll, anyway we'll talk about it in the next episode